couple of weeks ago on Gran Turismo Sport, I put out a very specific request for a certain livery replica, if anyone could do it for me, on the Mazda 787B, because that was the closest shape in the game to the particular car that I wanted to be replicated. And of course, many of you noticed that request, one of you in particular fulfilled that request for me, and that same livery won the GT Sport livery competition here on the channel that very week. And it was a black livery, a relatively simple one with Supreme written down the side and some very basic looking racing ribbons attached to it. So as far as a race car livery goes, it's not a particularly recognizable one and it's a fairly understated one. So why did I request that? Well, any of you who recognize that particular livery will know why because that livery is of course from this car, the Lamborghini Countach QVX. Sometimes referred to just as the Lamborghini QVX, this is pretty obviously a Lamborghini Group C car from the mid 1980s, 1985 is when it was actually built. And although many people don't realize that Lamborghini ever had one of these cars, I have notably seen more references dropped to this car over the past couple of weeks since that request and a couple before it as well about this particular vehicle. So for those who are curious about this apparent Lamborghini Le Mans car, if you will, which is definitely a very exciting prospect, especially if you hadn't heard of it before, what exactly does this car have to offer? And more importantly, especially when it ties into this series, why haven't you heard of it before? Because surely a Lamborghini Le Mans car is a big deal. Well, the answer is kind of in the question because the reason why you haven't heard of Lamborghini's Le Mans car is because it never raced at Le Mans. In fact, this car didn't race very much at all. Now, the car itself wasn't actually developed by Lamborghini. It was a commissioned work on their behalf based on the suggestion of Lamborghini's official UK dealership, which is the Portman Lamborghini dealership. Now, the car itself is not based on Lamborghini bodywork or Lamborghini chassis tech. It's actually based on a spice Group C chassis. And of course, Spice is a familiar name to anyone who knows anything about 80s Group C cars. But, however, the most important thing arguably about this Lamborghini is that, yes indeed, it does have a Lamborghini engine. And as the Countach name implies, it's from a Countach. Surprise, surprise. But it is heavily reworked, very heavily retuned, and despite the fact that this 5.7 litre mid-mounted V12 from the Countach is still naturally aspirated, no turbos, no superchargers, it is putting out in excess of 650 horsepower. So performance is potentially very good, especially when the weight is also under 900 kilos. And that, of course, brings us back to that question. Why haven't you heard of it before? If, of course, you haven't. Well, the reasoning is fairly simple, because in a similar way to a couple of the cars that we've discussed before, but in particular, very recently, the Lister Storm LMP car, very similar occasion, this is another one of those unfortunate times where it really was financial issues that prevented the car from being more noteworthy and arguably from having more of a chance to be a success at what it was intending to do. Now, to elaborate on why that was the case, the car, as I mentioned, was built in 1985, but it didn't actually do its first international race. It did a couple before, but its first proper big international event until November of 1986, with two drivers, which were Mario Baldi and a certain Tiff Nadell, who you've probably heard of, and the race was the 500 kilometers of Kyalami. Now the car qualified in 7th and ultimately finished in 5th and that was the only event that it ever ran in and completed because this wasn't one of those cars that started loads of times but then crashed or DNF'd or broke down. None of that. It just didn't show up in the first place. And that's unfortunate because they did intend for the car to even run in the Le Mans. So technically speaking, it kind of is a Lamborghini Le Mans car, but it's not because it never ran in Le Mans, which is a shame because who knows what it could have done. Now, what I was discussing about the financial side of things could seem strange given that it's Lamborghini that we're talking about, not a super tiny company like Lister. You could understand financial troubles in those kind of scenarios, but Lamborghini, really? That seems a bit strange for them to not be able to afford 
to develop the car more, to run it more. Well, actually, Lamborghini hasn't always been a super strong financial base for a company. And, of course, they have a lot to thank to Audi when it comes to their modern success. This is 80s Lamborghini. So it was even worse back then as far as the financial situation goes. They had cars which were well known, but that wasn't enough to make them anywhere near as resourceful and as powerful and as influential, you could kind of say, as they can be now. And get this, this is possibly the weirdest thing of all, they found it really difficult to find a sponsor for the car. How weird is that? You would have thought that everyone would want to sponsor a Lamborghini race car, they certainly would today, but not this one. Which is why the only company that they could find was Unipart Supreme. And that's why the car has such a basic livery. It was the only one they could find, or at least within the time frame that they had. Now, as far as the rest of the car's story goes, it's kind of a shame, because from 1986 onward, it really did just fall completely into obscurity. It never raced again, and it wasn't another decade before Lamborghini started actually running this kind of racing, not Group C, but top-tier events, again, with, of course, the Diablo. But ultimately, the QVX was lost to time. And it's one of many lesser-known Group C cars which, although they didn't have the success of many of the big dogs, the Sauber C9s, the Jaguars, various others too, of course the Porsches, they still definitely deserve to be talked about more because, success or not, a Lamborghini Group C car is awesome, even if it didn't win a race. It's just such a cool idea. And ultimately, this is the kind of machine where, in a similar way to some of the other cars that are more loved thanks to Forza and Gran Turismo and various other games that have shed light on them, even something like the Chaparral 2J, for instance, which is a dominating car in Gran Turismo, but never actually won a race in the real world, this is that perfect kind of occasion where if some franchise or specific game decided to include this Lamborghini, it would do wonders for its name, because its real-world exploits mean nothing once the gaming community loves it. It doesn't mean a thing for the Chaparral, because it's such a popular car, and that could definitely happen here as well, because if enough people realise that this car exists, it could definitely become another fan favourite. And at the end of the day, what's the point of this series if not just that? To shed more light on these cars which maybe they didn't win, maybe they were a failure, maybe they didn't have the best of ideas, but they deserve to be talked about more, and they deserve to be loved by more people. And I definitely think, and I'm sure many of you will as well, especially if you hadn't heard of this car before, that this is one of those vehicles that really does deserve that treatment, because failure or not, winner or not, a Lamborghini Group C car is just inherently awesome. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, if you are new to Unsung Heroes, you can click through here at the end to see all of the previous episodes. And there are some pretty interesting ones in there as well. But that's it for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching. 